Hello everyone, I'm Inverse, and on today's episode of Strat Talk, we're going to take a look at a very unique and very powerful build uh, for the Wehrmacht to use against the Americans from the South Angleville starting position. Let's get this game underway. We have Malium, M3A LLEM. I actually don't really know how to pronounce that name, so I'm going to be calling him Malium from now on because that's how I pronounce it. If that drives you crazy, I apologize. Uh, but we're going to have three games here, three tournament practice games against DevM, Damn Evil Vicious Mouse, a very top of the line uh, 1v1 player, very good American player. Dev, or uh, Malium, to his credit, a very good Vermox player. I'm actually going to be featuring another one of his builds, a Samoa build, in the next episode of Strat Talks, so look forward to that. Now, just to kind of outline the build for you guys as it's going down right now, it's a standard two pioneer start. This is going to be a little bit different. I'm not really going to focus too much on this little early skirmish because this isn't really indicative of a standard game. We're going to be uh, breezing through these three replays pretty quickly, and then we're going to go on to a fourth replay showing a bit more balanced normal way for this game to play out because these three games are practice games devm knows what knows what our Wehrmacht player is doing and is trying specifically to hard counter them so we're going to see a lot of experimentation and we're going to see how malium re reacts and changes up his build and his strategy depending on what the american player does but the normal build is a two pioneer start with the Wehrmacht quarters to the right hand side of your base right here. That's because we're going to be pushing up on the right hand side of this map. Generally speaking, uh, Angleville has traditionally been a American centered map, at least that's been the common wisdom. And the main reason for that is the accepted common wisdom for Wehrmacht play was left hand side play which is fairly easy to flank if we see there's a lot of open space which is good for positioning mgs but also makes flanks very very easy there's this entry this entry you can come in from here there's a lot of room down here you can come in and you can cut off the right hand side very easily now what malium does to to kind of counteract this is he's going to go right hand side he's going to build a tank trap right here this is very important you don't want wire here you want a tank trap because a unit cannot actually path through that tank trap and a wire a piece of wire can be cut whereas a tank tra trap obviously cannot and you're gonna wire off this area right here because with your bike a bike is able to very quickly kill an engineer that is trying to cut this wire right here so this is essentially completely locked off you have to be a little worried about your opponent walking down around here and jumping in this building but with proper scouting that shouldn't be too much of a problem now the build order is Volks, Bike, Volks, MG, MG Sniper, and the main gist of the strategy, I'll go over the capping order in the next replay because this replay didn't really give a good indication of the capping order since we had that really strange early game engineer rush uh, by Devon which did delay a little bit uh, the capping of the right hand side but didn't allow Malium to do the early game builder, uh, capping order rather, that he would have liked. Now, as we see right here, Devim is playing fairly passively with Americans. This is a very difficult strategy for Americans to counter, and when played correctly, uh, it's nearly impossible for the Americans to counter and to play against. Against very passive play, you're going to be want you're going to want to be doing what Malium is doing right now, which is the moment the first MG pops out. That's a very important time. You want to be pushing onto the left hand side as early as possible. Your main goal is to cut off this right, this left hand side and build an MG bunker right here. Having your right hand side fuel either decapped or cut off or something like that is not too big a deal because your main goal with this is resource denial. You are going to want to be transitioning into tier 3 off of this, but you can transition into tier 2. The main goal you should have is cutting off your opponent's fuel income on the left hand side and forcing him to devote attention to re-securing his resources because right now he's not only not getting fuel he's not getting this munitions point or this munitions point and that's 32 munitions income that he is not going to have access to that's very big 
and very p painful, especially this early in the game. It drastically limits your ability to use grenades, to plant mines, to use artillery. A lot of things that an American player needs in the mid game in order to deal manpower damage to a Wehrmacht opponent. And we have a, Ver a Wehrmacht player who has a plus 16 fuel, whereas his American opponent does not have a plus 16 fuel. In fact, only has a plus f 5 fuel for a total of 10 uh, munitions or uh, fuel income, rather. Now, as we see right here, it's fairly easy to hold this left-hand side. This is a very important MG position. This is also a very important MG position. You want to be defending against units coming down this road right here and flanking along here on the left-hand side, at least until you can get your MG bunker up in time to defend this cutoff. By then, even if your opponent gets a mortar or something like that and manages to destroy your MG bunker eventually, you it's dealt the damage that it had to have dealt. It's done its job, which was to delay and to and to deny your opponent resources and map control on the left hand side. Now I'm not sure if no Malium has not chosen a doctrine quite yet. He is going to go defensive. This is a very strong strategy for defensive. Works very well with defensive because you have for the fatherland to defend super early on if your opponent decides to go for some sort of bar rush which your opponent could absolutely try to do, kind of an all or nothing gambit, hope he can win, but might not, and if he doesn't win, he'll probably lose off of something like that. So for the Fatherland, very good at defending against that. Of course, your second point, first point should always go into for the Fatherland. Your second point should always go into fortify the perimeter. And the reason for that is twofold. First of all, it increases the lifespan of your bunkers. It's gonna make it a bit more difficult for mortars and flamethrowers and stuff like that to take it down. And secondly, you are going to be able to reinforce from this bunker, which is a very big help, especially in the early game because it saves you a lot of time. You don't really have to retreat, you don't have to go back to your base, heal up, anything like that, because you have that bunker to act as a forward reinforce point if need be. Now if we see on the left hand side, Malium is trying to decap this fuel point, that's never a bad idea. You have to expect your opponent to eventually destroy this bunker and recap the left hand side. And provided your right hand side is secured, it's never a bad idea to cap the left hand side and at the very least delay your opponent from recapping it by forcing him to cap the actual points and not just the strap point. As we can see right now, the bunker is down, but that's perfectly fine. Malium's not too worried about that. You can rebuild the bunker. You don't necessarily have to rebuild the bunker. Sometimes it's better to rebuild the bunker if it was killed with flamers or something like that against mortars or demo charges. You don't necessarily want or have to be rebuilding the bunker, but given the cost, it's extremely inexpensive in terms of manpower and munitions, and it forces your opponent to devote attention to trying to get rid of it, which is very useful and can buy you a lot of time because we are going to want to transition into tier 3 off of something like this. It's a strategy that tier 3 works very well against because any early game investment by the Wehrmacht, or by the American player rather, is going to result in delayed tech after the fact and it's going to strengthen any sort of tier 3 play. Your extended, your extended, um, your extended tier 1 also, also plays into that because you have more units early on. You're spending a lot more manpower while you're waiting for your fuel to come up uh, or to accumulate rather. And you have this bunker as well which facilitates a longer tier 1 phase because you're spending a lot more manpower on non-tech items. So that was the first game. As you see, pretty simple execution in this situation. Not the best strategy from DevM. Very early weapon support center after only a few rifle squads. Uh, but that kind of gives you a general idea of what the build and and kind of focus of this strategy is going to be heading forward. So let's jump into game number two and take a look at how DevM reacts to, to the strategy and how Ma Malium reacts back in turn. Alrighty guys, welcome back. Let us jump into game number two. Malium versus Devim practices. Yay. So, 
we're going to see in the early game. Nothing too spectacular. I'm going to be able to talk a little bit more about the general capping order for this map. Your first Pioneer Squad obviously going to build the Wehrmacht Quarters. Your second one is going to quick build because you want that Volks out as soon as possible and that's a very long travel distance for your first Pioneer to come out here. So if we look down at the resources, we're going to have just around... 280, 270 in that situation. If you build the Vermont quarters out a little bit further, you can actually push this a little further in this direction. You can time it so that the Vermont quarters will finish right when you have 280 manpower, which is a nice little timing to hit. Now, the very first uh, Pioneer Squad is going to head right here and is going to build the tank trap right there and then wire off right here and wire off this little area to the left. You do not have to wire off this area to the right. This is non pathable. Your any infantry cannot travel through this little crack, only this little area. So you do, do not have to w waste time wiring both sides, just the left hand side. This squad after he's done wiring is going to cap this point, then cap the VP, then head into this area to help with the fight. Meanwhile the other pioneer squad going to be capping this point down here and then going up here to cap this munitions point. While the, the Volk squad is going to go right for the fuel point going to cap this and then going to push out to the left hand side with the main goal being to secure this uh, strap point right here. This is a very important strap point to keep and to hold in the early game and the reason for that is with either without this strap point you need this strap point in order to actually build a bunker once you cut off your opponent right here because you need this territory to be connected to your territory so to your home base in order for you to be able to build that bunker. So that's an important thing to keep in note. This is a very important point. Playing against this strategy as well, decapping this point can be very painful for your opponent. As we see Devem pushing up on the right hand side, but that's perfectly fine for Malium. He has a bike, he has his Volk squad right here, just finished capping. If we look down here, he's going to be starting up his uh, second Volk squad very, very soon. This is a bad engagement. For Devim in this rifle squad, he's actually probably going to be forced to retreat right here. He's taking a lot of damage and not really dealing any. And generally speaking, you want to be waiting for a large retreat from your opponent before you push out onto the left-hand side. There are exceptions to that rule, which we saw last game with, with our American player playing really passively. And in a situation like that, you really do want to be very aggressive. Whoops, my bad. Uh, you want to be aggressive with your infantry because you have the upper hand in that situation. You have a bike, so you can dictate the flow of the battle. You can push your opponent's rifle squads out of cover. You can push flanking and approaching squads around so that they deal less damage and take more damage as a result. And stuff like that. So if your opponent is playing passively, it's never a bad idea to push into the right hand or the left hand side of your own accord. But generally speaking, you're going to want to wait for your opponent to make a move, take some damage, retreat, something like that before you push over onto the left hand side because you don't want him to have too strong a presence on the map while you're trying to decap his points because he can relatively easily push you off in a situation like that. So as we see right now, uh, Malium forced this rifle squad back and knows he has an, 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 an advantage at this point. So he is going to head over t to the left-hand side. And if we notice, we see that right there. That is a MG emplacement. So this is Devem's, th this is Devem's first kind of attempt at, at uh, kind of altering his build and his play style to account for this. Now, the response that Devem, or that Malium makes and that Malium does is very interesting to me and is something that, that I really want to emphasize is he still builds the bunker he has this bunker built into his build order he's planning on spending this 150 manpower 50 munitions on an MG bunker at some point so instead of having it defend or uh, defending his opponent's cutoff he's going to build it defending his plus 16 fuel now in this situation he's actually not gonna be able to get it up he's gonna have to wait a little bit later because Devon hit a nice timing right here pushing in on the right hand side but what our Wehrmacht player is doing at this point is saying hey this is a pretty big investment in the early game this is 200 manpower 20 fuel at a time 
when the American player doesn't really have much of anything. This is also a static defense. So long as our Wehrmacht player does not move into range of this MG, this MG is essentially wasted resources. With that in mind, our Wehrmacht player has an advantage in terms of resources. It's in, in, and in terms of units, really, it's just pure math at this point. He has more resources invested in units than his opponent, because his opponent invested in this relatively expensive static defense that isn't really going to pay off unless our Wehrmacht player allows it to pay off. So in this situation, we have a flank. This flank isn't really going to do anything. We have a lot of Volks. It's actually almost going to kill an MG and in fact probably going to decrew. I believe it does decrew this MG, it does. But if we look at the health of these two rifle squads, far too low, especially given the health of these Volk squads for anything to really get done. So a cutoff was achieved on the right hand side. That's definitely a victory for our American player. And this is a better start than he found himself in in the previous game where he was just instantly cut off and was really fighting a losing battle from that point. He does have some fuel income right now from this right hand side, which is absolutely good. But if we look on the left hand side, this is the area that our American player is wanting to focus on. He has the MG bunker, or the MG emplacement rather, at the cutoff. This is the point he wants. He doesn't want this point, because as we're going to see right now, there's going to be an MG bunker down here defending this fuel point. Malium wants to defend this fuel point because he wants to be able to push with all of his units on the left hand side and cut off this fuel point by simply decapping it. Not even by cutting it off traditionally down here, but by going right for the fuel point, cutting it off, camping this area, fortifying this area, and knowing that if his opponent tries to counter harass on the right hand side, there's not going to be any chance really of his opponent being successful in that regard unless he flanks around this area and comes in with either a mortar or a um, or a demo charge flamer squad or something like that in which case the Wehrmacht player Malium is more than likely going to have enough time to come back to defend anything like that as we see we do have defensive coming out next uh, the next point we'll go toward we'll go toward what's it called fortify the perimeter that's what it's called. It will go to hard fortify the perimeter, and that'll allow our Wehrmacht player to conveniently reinforce this MG. This Volk squad, this Volk squad, that's why he hasn't retreated these Volk squads right now. He's doing his best to get as much utility out of these squads as possible right now while he waits for his... Excuse me. While he waits for his CPs to increase. Now as we see looking at tech, we're going to have tier 2 on the way, his sniper is going to get counter sniped, which is unfortunate, but he can rebuild another one. He has a lot of manpower banked because he's been doing a fairly good job of conserving it. If we notice on the left hand side, he's not so much con uh, interested in capping this fuel point for himself as he is denying it from his American opponent. And this is a very important concept with this strategy. Your goal isn't to cap these points down here. If we notice, Malium hasn't even tried capping these two points, which are generally the first points you see a Wehrmacht player cap when he's going for something like a left-hand side strategy, which is more typical of Wehrmacht play on this map. Instead, our Wehrmacht player is saying, hey, you can take this left-hand side, and that's perfectly fine with me because my plan is to cut you off from it entirely and not allow you to gain any benefit from these resource nodes. Now, me, the Wehrmacht player, I'm not going to gain any benefit from them either, but that's perfectly fine with me. That's built into my plan. I have the right-hand side. I have a lot of munitions. I have a lot of fuel. Uh, Angoville is a map where you don't really need these two points. It's not like a map like Samoa or some of these other maps where resources are relatively scarce in the early game. There's a lot of plus 16s on this map. If we open up the tactical map, there's 1, 2, 3, 4 plus 16 munitions points, 2 plus 16 fuels to go along with these 2 plus 10 munitions points and plus 5 fuels. That's a whole heck of a lot of resources, and it's absolutely viable to only hold one side, not even worrying about these more convenient points, until a little bit later in the game when you can spare something like a Pioneer, or something like that in order to, aww, poor bike, uh, 
until until you can spare a pioneer to go cap these points, which you should definitely do when you can do it. But pioneers have a lot of utility in a in a a strategy like this because you're building bunkers, you're mining up if you can. You do have to be worried about your munitions because you want to have enough for a for the fatherland if you do need it. Now, if we notice right now, we have tier three coming out for our Vermont player. If we look in the American player's base, he does have a motor pool up, and that is mainly thanks to his ability to cap and hold this point on the right-hand side for himself for a short amount of time, not to mention this point on the left-hand side, thanks to the time that this MG emplacement bought him. However, it weakened his early game, and if we look at his rifle squads, I'm just going to take off the fog of war this rifle squad this rifle squad they aren't even reinforced they don't have any veterancy they have very few kills in fact this one with four kills that one i can't see this one with no kills very few kills on these rifle squads because he was forced to be so passive because he had invested so much in this early game mg emplacement it didn't really allow him to push out and be aggressive at all because he knew my opponent's going to have more units than me it's just a simple fact of the trade-off Devim decided to make by building this MG emplacement instead of building another rifle squad, instead of getting an earlier tank or motor pool, something like that. And as we can see, the Puma is on the way. Now, given the fact that our American player has a motor pool out, you could make an argument for the fact that... Puma might not be necessarily what you want in this situation. However, I kind of disagree with that sentiment mainly because in a situation where an M8 comes out at the same time as a Puma, generally speaking, the Wehrmacht player is in a better position. The Wehrmacht player has more tools at his disposal to deal with the American player's tech than the American player has tools available to deal with the Wehrmacht player's tech at that point. And what I mean with that is we have a Puma, and a Puma is far more effective against infantry than an M8. That's a simple fact. It does a lot more damage, stuff like that. Now, it's not as useful against vehicles. However, an upgun Puma is better than an M8 in terms of anti-vehicle damage and will, actually, and will actually beat an M8 in a one-on-one -on -one engagement. So in this situation, we have superior anti-infantry. We have, with a slight munitions cost, superior anti-tank. We also have the ability to counter AT guns with Nebelwerfers, stuff like that. And we have the benefit of a whole heck of a lot of map control for our Wehrmacht player in comparison to our American player. That means a lot of munitions, far less munitions for our American player, which in, turns me which in turn means less stickies, means less mines, stuff like that, no grenades, a lot of things. And M8s take years, years and years to kill Pumas. It's absolutely ridiculous. So if we look in the base, we're going to have a G-Wagon coming out, which is pretty much going to shut down this M8 cold. There's not really much you can do against a G-Wagon in this situation as an American player who's forced to decide between, hey, do I invest in, in more anti-infantry? I mean, there's a pretty strong infantry force relative to our American player in this situation. We have a lot of Volks, we have a Sniper, we have two MGs, and we have a Puma. All of this against a measly three, I believe, rifle squads, no rifle upgrades, and a Sniper. That's not really a good situation for our American player. And as we see, he's actually going to lose this M8 to Faust, which is... That was a pretty explosion. I'm not used to that because I play on low settings, but that was really nice. But yeah, he's going to lose that M8 to Faust, which is like the absolute last thing you want to be losing an M8 to. Now, of course, there is the G-Wagon, and DevM now knows that there is a G-Wagon because it drove right up to the VP, but there is a G-Wagon right now. So not necessarily that M8 not, wouldn't have necessarily had a very long lifespan anyways, but it's always better to force your opponent to kill something and spend a little more effort than hit a few Fausts. But as we see, we're going to have a bike, and this is just kind of mop-up for for Malium at this point. I'm gonna speed things up a little bit because we've passed the main 
kind of focus of the strategy that I really wanted to talk about. So it's just kind of playing out a very standard end game with Pumas, G Wagons, Tier 3 going up against some mixed infantry, snipers, AT and stuff like that. Stuff's gonna die. There's actually gonna be a lot of dead Pumas, but at this point, Devon's in a very, very bad position. And there's very little chance of him coming back, even though he's gonna kill him. Folk squad. Nose. And another Puma. Because that's a lot of sticky bombs. Sticky bombs are pretty good against Pumas. So everything dies, pretty much. For the Fatherlands popped, but nobody cares. Excuse me. This G Wagon gets a grand total of one kill. From like 18 different shots. And the defensive reinforcing is going to come in handy a little bit. Dum dee dum dee dum. Kill stuff. I just want this game to be over. Let's go to 8x speed. Fast forward warp speed. Warp speed. Go. Don't die. Don't die. Don't die. Don't die, guys. Lots of Pumas. Lots of Pumas. Okay, that's enough. Game two, over. I'll be back with game. Alright guys, welcome back. Let's get going with game number three. Same map, same starting positions, same players. Now keep in mind, this is the third straight game these two have played. This is going to be the third straight game Malium has played with this strategy. And Devim knows that Malium will be using this strategy again. And this is going to be his third chance at hard countering what Malium is doing. This is a very good way to practice for any of you guys who have buddies you'd like to 1v1 against and stuff like that. The best way to figure out if a build you use is good enough to get you very, very far is to tell your buddy, hey, guess what? I'm going to be doing this. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go whatever, Volks, Volks, Sniper, MG. I'm going to go MG Bike. I'm going to go this cutoff strat, for example. Hard counter me. Do whatever you want. This is the order I'm going to build all my stuff in. This is where I'm going to go. Try and beat me. And if you can play and beat your your, your opponent 70, 75, 80% of the time with that strategy, just by simply outplaying him, not being sneaky at all, not tricking him, not saying, hey, I think he's not going to think I'm doing this, so I'm going to do this instead, stuff like that, catching your opponent off guard, just saying, hey, this is what I'm doing. Try and beat me. If you can beat players when they know exactly what you're doing that's when you know you found something and a style that you can play for a very long time against a wide range of opponents and have a lot of success with it that's the main kind of gauge of a strategy's ability to win consistently it's being able to tell your opponent what you're doing and still being able to beat him in this straight up match. And this is going to be game number three of such a situation. Where we have a player, Malium, told his buddy Devon, hey, we're practicing for this tournament. I want to use this strategy. I think it's a very good strategy. I think it's a very strong strategy. I want you to try and beat it. Because when your opponent tries in a situation like this, to completely hard counter what you're doing you can learn a heck of a lot from what your opponent actually decides to do you can learn hey i need to be ready for certain reactions i need to react myself in certain ways my opponent could be doing a certain number of things what do i do against this and what can my opponent do against this that's very powerful at least relative to what I'm doing. And this is Devim's third chance. So we're gonna see exactly what what he's got in store here. Now as we notice on this right hand side we have a far weaker hold on the map for our Vermok player. We don't even have this point neutralized. Just now it's been neutralized. We have this strap point capped. We're gonna have this point actually decapped very quickly. And we also had a slight slip in macro with this Volk Squad. This Volk Squad should actually be on the field right now. Uh, but our Vermont player let himself get to, I believe it was 350 manpower before building that. Slight little mechanical snafu, but not too big of a deal, at least for our purposes in this situation. Now a bit of an overextension right here by Devon. He's gonna wanna run away from this sooner rather than later. Not going to really end up too well for him and at this point 
Malium is finally going to be able to push back at least slightly his American opponent. We see a rifle squad still up here. Lots of aggression, lo a lot more aggression this game than we've seen in past games from Devim. Definitely not a super, super early weapon support center like he showed in previous matches. And constant aggression on the cutoff, constant aggression on the field point. What Devim's trying to do in this situation is force Malium to play defensively. This is one of the more difficult ways, like, things that your opponent can do. And it makes it a little bit more difficult for you as the Wehrmacht player. Because your goal, what you want to do is you want to cap some territory. Then you want to be defensive with that territory until your opponent pushes in and makes a mistake. And when your opponent makes a mistake, you capitalize on that mistake. You push over to this left-hand side, and you decap your opponent's strap point. And by then, the game is, for all intents and purposes, over. Of course, you play it out, and stuff can happen, and this and that. But you, as the Wehrmacht player, if you are able to completely cut your opponent off, put an MG bunker down, you have a massive advantage at that point. And we have some banter about why the right side is so good. Right side is very good for Wehrmacht. Lots of people... Traditional, tra traditional kind of Wehrmacht style has said do not go right hand side because you can be flanked on the right hand side and while that is true, uh, for the fatherland defensive and strategically placed wire as we see on this right hand side around this cutoff makes the right hand side actually fairly easy to hold. I mean not necessarily as we can see right here easy to hold this fuel point because it's fairly easy for the American player to camp your right hand side because these hedges give him a nice little natural shot blocking barrier and as a American player you really like shot blocking in terms of being able to defend and delay and all that kind of stuff uh, look at that look at that nothing died my goodness but as we see, Malium was patient, and this was that's that's the mistake he was waiting for. That's kind of the mistake that if you defend properly, you are always going to force. Now in this situation, we have a rifle squad coming in because Devim knows what's going on right now, so he's going to try his best to to prevent it from happening. But in a situation where your opponent is fighting around your cutoff, I'm just gonna ignore this little fight going on right here because a rifle squad died. And this is gonna be cut off, and then the game is pretty much going to be over. Uh, third time in a row with the same strategy against a very good American player. But what I wanna talk about is the consequences of the American player pushing so hard on this right-hand side is let's look at this tac tactical map. If we cut the map in half, I'd say we go from this corner can I draw a box? I can. Let's say we go from this corner straight across to this corner. This is the halfway point. Let's say our opponent, our American opponent, is fighting primarily in here. If we take this in terms of top half, bottom map, half, where the top half is the American player's half, the bottom half is the, Ve the Wehrmacht player's half, this skirmish area right here, down on this right hand side, is far closer to the Wehrmacht player's base than the American player's base. And this has a few different ramifications. First of all, it's far easier. I'm actually gonna pause this game so their chat does not distract me. Uh, but when your opponent fights closer to your side of the map than his side of the map, a few things occur. First of all, it's much easier for you to get reinforcements to the battle. New units that are produced are going to arrive and deal damage far earlier than your opponent's new units. That's going to give you uh, windows of time when your units are first built where you're going to have more than your opponent just in terms, just for virtue of the fact that your opponent's units have to walk from here all the way down here, whereas your units have to walk from here to there. Far, far shorter walk, big difference in terms of how quickly you can get units onto the field. Furthermore, units you're reinforcing, units that had to retreat and come back, far easier for you to get a unit that you reinforced and retreated back to the fighting than it is for, for your opponent. Every retreat that your opponent does is more impactful than every retreat he forces on you because he has to 
spend more time retreating because this is a longer distance than this. So he's spending more time retreating. He's reinforcing, whereas you're reinforcing as well. And then he's spending more time moving back, whereas you're spending far less time moving back. Now there's also the factor that American units in the early game have lots of squads, like are that didn't make any sense at all. Uh, American squads in the early game have lots of men, which increases the amount of time it takes for them to reinforce. So that's just one extra layer of time bonus that you get as the Wehrmacht player by defending down here, as opposed to say pushing up here where your opponent's a lot closer to the front, his base is, than you are. So the converse is true in that situation, and that's kind of why traditionally the left-hand side has been very good for Americans, because if we look at this halfway point again, this fuel point right here is on the American player's side of the halfway point. And though it's not nearly as, as pronounced as this cutoff and this fuel point, it's still something that you have to keep in mind, especially when you have two players who are of fairly equal skill, which in this situation, uh, Devim and Maliam, definitely, uh, definitely fairly equal uh, in skill. So we're just going to speed through their little conversation because it's good information and it's very, uh, it's very educational, educational as well. Dum -de -dum -de -dum. And after this game, we're going to go for one last final game. And then we are going to conclude episode, I believe this is episode three. Episode three of Strat Talk. Is there any more chat? Is there any more chat? I just want to make sure I don't miss any chat because these two are very smart players. And it's always nice hearing what smart players have to say about the game. Sniper dies. Sniper dies. Uh, other sniper dies. Ah, third sniper dies. Oh my god. And yep, that's the end of the game. So that's game number three. We're gonna go on to a game against an opponent who isn't Devim this time. So let's check that out. Alrighty, guys. Let's jump. In. Let's jump into the fourth and final game of the Strat Talk series. Uh, a few more games this time. But they were pretty short ones, so I don't think this episode should be too long, hopefully. We'll see how it goes when I, uh, when I start to edit it down, but we will see. This is going to be a ladder game, a practice ladder, ladder game between Malium and Skyland from All Stars. Uh, and we saw in the Devim games a lot of different approaches being taken by Devim, the American player in terms of how he felt he should be reacting to a strategy like this. He knew in each of the games what Malian would be doing. So we saw some off the wall, wacky, kind of different strategies that you don't necessarily see in your everyday uh, playing of Company of Heroes. And while it was interesting to kind of take a look into how the American player was attempting game by game to adapt to what our Wehrmacht player was doing. I think it's probably better to take a look at a completely standard style of American player and see how this strategy actually holds up and as it turns out it's pretty brutal as we're going to see in this game. Standard capping order going out for Malium that we discussed before first pioneer squad putting down this all-important tank trap right here now something interesting to note is apparently if you stack up all your rifle squads right here or your rifle men on a single rifle squad right here and then spam right click on this building you can actually phase through <laughs> this uh this tank trap and get into this building with a rifle squad i have not actually seen it done personally this was told to me by aimstrong and I tend to trust Aim Strong and his opinion when it comes to Company of Heroes, but do take that with a grain of salt. I am not in any way saying that is actually possible. I'm simply saying I was told that it is possible by someone who, generally speaking, knows his stuff. So do keep that in mind when playing a strategy such as this. Um, now everything pretty much going exactly according to Malium's plan in this situation. We have this fuel point being captured. We have minimal pressure being applied on the right-hand side. If we notice, as or as we noticed rather, in game number three, 
the most difficult, the most difficulty uh, Devim actually managed to give Malium with the strategy was super aggressive rifle play on the right hand side very early. Not even bars, nothing like that, just very aggressive rifle play in the early game. And that's kind of been lacking from Skyland in this game. And we're, and we're going to see how Malium is able to punish it and take advantage of it. If we see right here, this bike tanked a whole heck of a lot of damage. These two squads actually going to be forced to retreat super early. And if we look at our Wehrmacht player's situation in terms of map control, this is the exact situation he wants to be in in order to push into this left-hand side and decap this strap point, and that's exactly what he's going to be doing. This is kind of what happens when your opponent plays a completely standard normal style, which is what uh, which is what Skyland is doing. If we, if we look in his base, we have rifle squad there, we have an engineer there, we have an engineer here. So it, it was a three uh, engineer start. So not completely standard, but in terms of L degrees of what we saw with Devim and the strategy Devim, the strategies plural rather, that Devim attempted to perform. This is far more standard than any of those in this situation. And as we can see right here, simply cutting it off, cutting off the strap point is all Malian wants to be doing at this point. See, he's going to be moving around, going to be focused firing a lot of these low health rifle squads, trying to get into the cover of this MG and before your opponent or before you rather have actually had a chance to cap this point fully for yourself and get an MG bunker there this first MG can absolutely act as a substitute for uh, for the MG bunker in this situation because you're going to have a second MG out in the near future that's going to be able to defend your other flank as well so in this situation two MGs and a bike absolutely more than enough to defend any sort of attack in the early game especially considering the amount of damage our American player was actually had actually taken in that early engagement he lost a lot of infantry not even full squads because he didn't lose any full squads but a lot of a lot of manpower in terms of having to reinforce squads and stuff like that if we look in Skylands base he has no tech He's going to be going for bars eventually, but he has three rifle squads, he has three engineers, he has a flamer squad, and all of this going up against two very low health Volk squads, which isn't too big of a deal in this situation. We have the MGs in good positions. This MG is actually facing a very weird position, but that's not too big of a deal. Uh, but at this point, Malium's just trying to delay, trying to buy himself as much time of his opponent being without um, without fuel, without map map of anything really of any sort. He doesn't really have any sort of map control at this point. Effective map control at least. He of course has all these points on this left hand side. Uh, but at this point, Malium's in a dominating position. If we look, he's going to be able to recap this point. He defended the flank with just two MGs. This is the strength of this middle area right here, is the American player's initial reaction to his cutoff being taken is, hey, I need to get that back. If I let my opponent camp my cutoff for too long, it's not going to be good. I'm not going to have resources. He's going to be able to build an MG bunker, stuff like that. Having an MG right here, an MG right here, and a bike makes this area nearly impeg- in, impeg- God, I cannot talk tonight. It's not even- it's- it's 11.24 when I'm recording this, and I can't even talk. Impenetrable. Impregnable? Impregnable. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> One of those. One of those. Uh, it's very difficult to break a, a- a defense like this. As we can see, a rifle squad can't come down here. Rifle squads can't really come across here either. They can kind of cut off, cut in two areas right here, but as we can see, very good defense by Malium in this situation with this uh, this Pioneer squad with the Flamer right here. Going to kill a rifle. No, not going to kill a rifle. But just very good job and very easy position to hold in this situation. We have bars pop, but they're a little late. And at this situation, this is... In this like instance, this is an all-or-nothing 
effort by uh, by Skyland, and as we can see, did not really pay off at all, and that's going to be GG. So that's kind of what happens when a standard style of American play clashes with a strategy like this. It's the basic uh, the basic philosophy of holding on to the right hand side, capping the territory we need. So if we look at the tactical map, capping this point, getting these three points over here, getting this all important strat point, waiting for your opponent to push in, to take a little bit of damage, to force to be forced to retreat, and then push over and focus your assault, not on defending the right hand side, but on attacking the left hand side, which does two things. First of all, it cuts your opponent off. He's not taking resources. It defends your right hand side because your opponent is focused on regaining his left hand side he's less likely to send infantry squads rifles and stuff like that to the right hand side and if he does he's diverting units that he could be sending to attempt to resecure the left hand side which makes it a lot easier for you to hold that left hand side and divert a few unit units over to this right hand side to defend or something like that of course having defensive doctrine we did not really see any use for the fatherland in these games Though in the early game, it's absolutely something you can be using. Now, of course, you want to be saving up the 50 munitions for the, the MG bunker. Excuse me, uh, when you can afford it. But beyond that, you're not really spending too much munitions in the early game. Because you have a bike and you have two MGs, which means the utility of mines is far less than it would be in a strategy such as Volkswagen Sniper MG. When you have far less control over your opponent's flanking. Because you have a lot of control over your opponent's flanking when you have two MGs, you have a bike, and you have architecture like this area on the map. Or you have a nice little divide that actually in this situation helps you as a Wehrmacht player because you're able to isolate your opponent's two flanking areas, which of course would be this area right here and this area right here and give yourself a far better chance of holding any sort of early game bar, grenade, heavy rifle flank which more often than not is going to be what you're going to be facing with a strategy like this. And we also didn't see too many later game transitions, but the transitions we did see were to tier three, and I feel that is the strongest way to transition off of the strategy because it f punishes your opponent for investing in any fuel-based tech that isn't motor pool. Because when he's cut off, hey, he doesn't have any more fuel income. He has 10 fuel income per minute, which is absolutely abysmal when you consider you as the Wehrmacht player of 21 fuel. More than double in that situation, and you're already on a tech path that puts you at Pumas around the 10 to 12 minute mark, which is very, very fast, seeing as you're being so aggressive in the early game. So that's the general gist of that strategy. I apologize that the games weren't necessarily of higher quality, but with a strategy like this, it's a little difficult to get high quality games. They're usually very messy because the early game amounts to the American player doing everything in his power to prevent the situation we see right now, to prevent this cutoff. Because once this cutoff occurs, you as the Wehrmacht player are in excellent shape, and that should always be your goal with a strategy like this. So. Thank you guys for watching. Tomorrow we are going to be looking at a similar strategy. Not necessarily the same and not on the same map, nor is it really the same focus, but it is also by, uh, by Malium. It's going to be a Wehrmacht strat. And I hope you guys check that one out as well. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.